for those of y'all in the video version, we're not recording the actual show yet, but don't be alarmed later. Lucas is going to sneak in in a clown mask to scare Lee. So you're going to see a clown mask at some random point in the show. You it, Like, don't Do not jump back. You know, it, it, it's not a real clown. Well, actually, I think it is. But he's going to he's gonna scare the shit out of Lee, and it's going to be amazing. It's going to be awesome. Okay, it's been a very calm evening, and we're sitting here, and Lee has uh, made it calm. to the podcast. Finally! Up. Shut up! And we're about to start the show. So, uh, we'd like to remind everybody that today's episode is brought to you by Sprite. Just kidding, that'd be cool, though. Dilly dilly! Dilly dilly! Yay! Alright, okay, so, uh, set the thing over there. And... Are you going to put a hat on? Then I have to oh, by the children. Oh, grandpa hair looking at him. Is there anything else to fall with on top? Put it on top. You are right here. I gotta... I gotta, go, I gotta go to the bathroom. I'll be right back. I go to the bathroom and I tell the children to stay. Alright. <clears throat> don't start with that. Don't start with that. Why does that matter? I mean, she hasn't ever found anything at the beginning of the show. Anyway. I mean, just, don't start without me, guys. It's gonna make a difference. So, we're gonna buy that today, but we went by the one yesterday. Hey, what What's happened to having this light off? What's so exclusive about it? Those are. Did you get the recording? Huh? Did you get the recording? Get out of here! Mom said to get a drink. Then shut your face and get a drink. <coughs> Parenting one on one. Yeah. Yeah. Alright, it's okay. Jennifer's a big ball of sunshine. It balances out. Uh, when, can we get this light off though? Jesus Christ! Christ. It's a porch light. Okay, alright, we'll turn off. It's behind Emerson. Cooper, what are you doing? Doesn't matter. Now get, get the light off, please. Where am I turning the light off? At? Behind Emerson. What? Yeah! Is that better? Oh, never mind. That's too dark. You, uh, need, you need to get a cooker to do huh? okay. You know what? It fits the mood. Uh, you got what I need. <laughs> Oh, you know she's gonna be like, I can't see. Yeah, why not? Yeah, alright, well, get, get it back on. It, it, it wasn't. It, I don't like this lighting. It's too dark. If somebody was here before, it, it wasn't too dark earlier, but somebody. <laughs> like, what are you talking about? about? <laughs> somebody was in shot it. Well, I'm sorry that I had to be a big boy and work today. Hey, I worked today too. Uh, for what, three hours? More than that, actually. But. We're not open yet. I'll work for longer when we're actually a store that sells things. Well, I'm a store that sold things too, and then I have to... Yeah, you didn't sell things. Yeah, we did. Yeah, it was a decent day. Listen to all this pre-podcast banter that y'all are just getting for free on YouTube. This is why you gotta come to my YouTube channel, okay? The audio version's just fine. But this is like four minutes... Everything's okay, I'm back! <clears throat> oh, goody. All right, we got a lot to talk about, I think. Let's start. I feel here. even shorter sitting in this thing. Let's begin chair. the program. Well, Do you need to see the chair? No. i got to wait for everybody to be quiet. We decided you couldn't fit in the rocking chair, so I have to sit in the rocking chair. Is yeah. that all right? Accurate? You might fall through it. you got some cat fur uh, on your eyelashes. Okay. <laughs> there was cat fur on your eyelashes. It's showtime. Hello, everyone. Welcome to episode 20 of the Dirty Balls Podcast, and we have pulled out all the stops for episode 20. We got Lee, and that's about it. But, uh, so, it's a very special episode because we get to talk about, Jennifer, no, turn it back on, <clears throat> we get to talk about yesterday, which I thought was awesome. We got to go to Burlington to see the Burlington Royals, the class, the rookie affiliate of the Kansas City Royals, uh, and the game was awesome. Uh... And it kind of brings me to, it, it's really going to book in the episode from a few weeks ago. Because remember how we talked about Winston-Salem? Sucks. There are some ballparks that have all these modern amenities, and they're a very pretty ballpark. But they don't have a good staff, and they don't have good atmosphere. And let me tell you, atmosphere is very important. And then there's some places that are... A, a little yard in the middle of nowhere that you might blink and pass on the side of the road. But then you go in there, and it's a real classic blast from the past. And the staff is friendly, and the and the food is cheap, 
and the fans are into the game and invested and it's a whole deal and you get to have an awesome night. And there's no better place than somewhere like that. Where is somewhere like that? You gotta go through the hood to get there, <laughs> but it's Burlington. Burlington, North Carolina. Let's talk about our experience in Burlington. Lee, what do you, you want to start? Yeah, that place was awesome. Well, first, let's go ahead and say that I have called the general manager twice on his personal cell phone. And he has yet to answer. So Of Winston-Salem. Suck it, C.J. Johnson. You know what Johnson is, right? That's what you are. <laughs> I don't understand how you guys always have such bad experiences there. but every... We don't want to hear about your good experiences. That's fine. Silence. Silence. This isn't your podcast. Quiet, please. I know, you, this isn't your podcast. So Quiet, unless please. you're asked a question, then hold you the need legs, to zip it. Your face. Just hold the legs, man. I just think it's y'all. Hold Did you legs. borrow that hat from Alan? Because it's too small for your large head. Ethan told me to wear a hat. There's not a hat here that fits him. Why would you tell him to do that? To make him look like a fool? He already looks like a fool because he's wearing I don't that like gay his, jersey. I don't, I don't like his hair. I don't like that gayness that he Exactly. Jersey. Then go get another shirt. No, you're not wearing my shirts. <laughs> you don't want the gayness to rub off on it. Yeah. Or go, so, get some, go get some buzzers and buzz this mop off my head. Come on. Live and on camera? Well, I can just type that there. We can do something. Yeah, suck it. You looked at it. And if you go on to Facebook and look at the picture that we took yesterday in front of the sign, <laughs> you'll all see it. The champ. The champion. There's some other nice pictures on Facebook, too, of our guest Lee here. We're not going to talk about that. Uh, DM any one of us. We all have them. Uh, or you can just check it out on Instagram or yeah. Facebook. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure they'll be glad to show them to you. We will be. On we'll Allen's. Be check out Allen's. Don't, yeah. do, don't do that. Alright, well, so the game, what I love the most about Burlington is that the fans were into it. The whole game. Well, like, first, Burlington, they hold 3,400 people. So, no, I'm sorry, 3,500. And yesterday's attendance was 1,428. Felt more than that. Felt like more than that. Yeah. It did, just because it, it's I mean, small and compact. It's, it's really small, you know. A lot of aluminum bleachers, so the, I mean the fans are stomping and beating the bleachers and everything. We got our good seats, us rich people. The rich there. seats. <laughs> and so when we eat the chicken, we gotta throw the bones backwards, backwards. to the cheap seat. Yeah, that's a, that's a Charlotte Motor Speedway reference. And and this stadium was actually in the movie Bull Durham. Yeah. At the very beginning. Oh, okay. That's like that's your fact. I that told is that yesterday. Fact. Okay. Well, I also done the fact checking and. The, the stadium was actually built in... Dayton. And then moved in Burlington in 1960. <laughs> but who do they move from? Ooh, I forgot that one. Oh, Danville. Danville. Oh, oh there oh, is some... Yeah. There is some <laughs> rival... I, we, we didn't hear How about... How much was the stadium purchased for? This is crazy. I don't, I don't know. $5,000. That's it. That's it. No wonder when they announced the Danville score yesterday, everybody started booing. Oh, okay. way to scoop me, Lee. There were the seeds well, of a rivalry. On here. The seeds of a rivalry. We were there yesterday, and they announced Danville was was winning the game they were in, and everybody was booing like crazy. And it, it's got that feel, man. I want to go to a game when it's Danville and uh, Burlington. It's got to be the biggest rivalry ever. Because I have a theory. That town didn't look like anything. And the... Sports are amazing in towns where there's not much to do. Yep. Because that's the whole town. That's what they're proud of. And Hickory, it's, it's like that, but just too big. <clears throat> if we were a couple thousand less people, then, and we had a little bit smaller stadium, we could be like that too. Also, I think Chance, and Chris, I hope you're listening, Chance would work amazingly in Burlington because whenever there was something on the intercom, like, you know, everybody clap your hand. Everybody did it. Or like day, oh yeah, everybody did that thing too. The crowd did everything that, that that they were supposed to do. They were loud. They booed the hell out of the umpires. It was great. I, we we took a picture with the mascot. His name is Bingo. Like we always do when we go to another stadium. And Bingo, I, what's his name? It's just thing. And um, I sent it to Chase. I said, look where we're at. And he said, oh, good old Burlington. And um, and so he's like, yeah. I said, this is our first time here. And Ethan told him it looked like a dump, but it was a classy dump, which, which is true. I said charming. Yeah, well, you also said something. But anyway, and um, 
I told him after we left, I said, you know, it was really nice. You know, it was a nice stadium. I said, Frisco will always, you know, be our number one looks, beautiful wise ballpark. But this one right here is atmosphere, fans, interaction. I mean, like, I mean, uh, on field staff. On field staff. Was, was they were definitely. fantastic. I mean, I said that's we, the best, and he said yes. He's like the crowd really gets into it, and I said yes, they do. I said the crowd we even could start a 108 there, and it would just like I don't, you, I don't think the opposing team would want to come to this stadium because they would want to have to deal with us. We'd be the Cameron crazies of minor league baseball. You seriously could be because with you know, if you could get fans into the chance there, like I guarantee everybody that was there would be getting into it. And plus, it's such a small stadium that they're gonna hear you. They even chanted a kid's name that was doing an on-field challenge. Chanted the kid's name while he was doing the challenge. That kid must have felt awesome about that. That would have been cool. I mean, it helps when you have on-field people who want to be there, who actually care about their job, and, you know, they want to make the fan experience better. But let's talk about the actual looks of the stadium. Right. Maybe maybe five rows of actual seats and then bleachers, and then another section of bleachers off to the third base side, another off to the first base side, and then a little yard where you can come and put your own lawn chair. And... Uh, that's pretty cool. It, it to me, it felt like I was going to like a college game or something. I mean, if you had to take a guess, there's maybe 250 seats with backs on them, maybe. Yeah. Or like when my dad used to play in like the Baptist Church softball league. That was it's it like it was like one of those kind of things. You go and buy like a two dollar bag of popcorn, and like it was, it it has it hasn't been bitten by the modern baseball bug. You go to places and everything's ten and fifteen dollars, and you gotta you gotta break the bank to go and. And How much was your bag of popcorn? Two dollars. I mean, concession prices were fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, even two, beer. Beer was, beer was good. I mean, they had they did they had souvenir beer cups. Cup I mean, holders at the urinals. That was that was <laughs> that is a development. But what was cool about the urinals? It looked like you were in a locker. A room. locker. Yeah. That was their locker. I mean, it had you know Jim Tomey's name and number, and like his jersey was hanging there and. There's never been so much character and random cool little things packed into such a small park. I mean, I, I, it was awesome. The I, tin I roof. It. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I didn't like that there was a net in, everywhere. You couldn't sit anywhere where there wasn't Safety. a net. But that's a really small nitpick. The net was dark, so it kind of it it made it hard yeah. to see unlike ours. Ours blends in with the grass, and you mm -hmm. can actually see what's going on. Y'all yeah, call Mark, get a hickory net. But, you know, other than that, it was <clears> great. <throat> I mean, I can't wait to go back, and, you know, I hope we've been to, since Jennifer has been coming to the games, we've been to 21 ballparks, including Hickory, and like I said, Frisco's number one, this one's number two on, you know, atmosphere and everything, and I really, really wish that our people that run the stadium would go to this stadium just and don't learn notes, and I wish our fans could be like their fans. Well, I mean that that's that's different. But that's I'll, besides the point. But if like, you have if, staff, if we though, have that staff helps that with loves that. and cares and wants our team to actually do something, then you might and have then more quit fan talking interaction crap about the team that they work for. Yeah. Then we would just be and. Even it, better. After the game, we went and talked to a girl and told her how much I we mean, liked Lee, it. Okay, I don't want to cut you off, but Lee walked into this stadium wearing nothing but red stuff because we were playing the Greenville Reds, which is the rookie ball, of, a rookie league affiliate of the Cincinnati Reds, and uh, and the rally fell short. Yeah, the rally fell short, but you know, you got to see the Reds uh, first round draft pick number five overall, which was an awesome reason to go, you know, to get a ball signed and everything, but. But Where, for, uh, decked out in red stuff, not one negative word said. Not nobody booed me like they have at some stadiums. Where like they have at some stadiums. I mean, they, they put you on the field to do a contest. I mean, on field contest. Of course, Green Girls done that to me. I was a a, a guest manager for the for the away team, but I don't think the girl that knew what she was doing. But there go again to like, Winston Salem. You wear the the opposing colors. They treat you like crap. dog crap. Here, they didn't care. You they know, don't. I mean, they, they wanted they wanted the seats. They wanted the seats full, and they wanted you to have a good experience. Mm -hmm. And both of those checked. And off like for as me. you guys know, you know how passionate I am about the crowd ads and how passionate I am at home. And it's so frustrating, like when you go to a stadium like this and you see what everything is actually capable of. 
but then you go home and it's just it's crap because you have somebody who's so passionate, who cares about the game, who cares about our team, who wants us to win, who wants fan interaction, and then you just get you just get talked down upon all the time. You get you know you get griped at all the time because you're trying to have fun. We're not trying to be too hard on on LP Friend Stadium here. We still love going to games here in Hickory, but oh yeah, just it's not. Bur- it's, we went to Burlington and we saw what Hickory Hickory's already good. We saw how it could be great. I mean, exactly. 100% honest to God truth. When we won the championship, you know, these two guys were there. Me and Lucas, we didn't go, but we came to the clubhouse when the bus pulled up. And I remember Joe Filomino got off, shook my hand, about broke it off. <laughs> but he said, he told me, thank you. He says, you deserve this championship just as much as we do because you guys were out here supporting us making it hard on the hitters when I'm pitching, giving them a hard time, you know, and that's why I said, you know, we're going to get a ring. I want, I want my replica ring from the championship. I deserve it. I come out there and I bust my butt every night to support my team and to get in these guys' heads because I done it the other night. Hashtag rings for Allen. There you go. <laughs> but uh, after we, after the game was over, Allen approached a girl that was one of the on-field people and mm-hmm. told her that, what we were talking about, how, you know, Frisco's our number one ballpark looks-wise, but as far as overall experience and stuff goes, this is our favorite. And she was impressed. She liked, she was... She said she got cold chills. I mean, I was yeah. being honest because the game was super fast. They you could tell fireworks. she was proud of herself and her friends for doing that. And then I mess, when I this morning when I got to work, I messaged them on Facebook and just, you know, let them know how fantastic the experience was. And, you know, they were just, they were just ecstatic that they could provide that kind of, a, of an experience for us. So, you know, it was it was such an awesome time, and I tell you what, I can't wait to go back. I, I'm thinking about calling the GM tomorrow, because, you know, I do that. Yeah. They actually might talk to him. But, yeah, they might pick up the phone, and I'm going to let them know. It, it was super awesome. I loved it. I mean... I can't wait to go back. I don't know where we'll have to fit it in our schedule, but we will definitely... If we don't go back this year, we will. it will be yeah. one of those parts that we have to go I to. I wish rookie ball was a longer season. Yeah. Is there anything in the ballpark to ballpark about it? Did you check? I, I didn't check. I was going to message them today, and I just haven't got around to it. You got the book there. Just look through no, it. No, it's not like that. It, it tells you, it, it gives you a story. It doesn't break down ballparks, oh. like, you know, stat-wise. <laughs> okay, all right. All right. So, so. I, Jennifer, you've kind of been quiet during this whole thing. What, what, what all do you think about Burlington? The ladies' bathroom was awesome, too. It had, the, what is that, the League of Their Own? Mm-hmm. That's what the bathrooms in there look like. Locker rooms from that movie. They had like a mural painted on the wall. It's the best bathroom I've seen since Lexington. Yeah, bathrooms Lexington. impressed me. And there again, Lexington. Who were they? They're the affiliated with the Royals. I swear, you know, this is going to piss Ethan off. But by me going to Lexington, being friends with Chase, and going to, Dur- to uh, Burlington, I could become... A Royals fan. Hey, I might be sold on a lot of I mean, I could, become, I could become a fan of a major league team based on their, you know, minor league stadiums and stuff because Lexington, they went out of their way to make us happy. You know, I got the wrong As side. much I as we shit on sense. Lexington for, our, for their last trip to No, Hickory. it wasn't like It was just that coach. But, um, you know, when, I, when we went last year, I got seats on the home dugout. <laughs> Audio people, just don't even, just go to my YouTube channel. You have to watch this week's episode. Watch this week's episode. I'm not going to tell you what just happened. Watch the video. Watch this video. I'm going to kill the kid. (laughs) But yeah, I, I I might be sold on the Royals as well. I might have to... I mean, Kansas City can't be too much of a drive just like Texas. It's got to be about the same. It's, it's a little closer, I think. Uh, so, <laughs> I've seen it. I I've it. seen the park on TV. It looks like a beautiful oh, park. Do. They got a waterfall. That's your heart rate right now. It's, the waterfall, the scoreboard up. that's shaped like the logo. Yeah. It looks I mean, like I've, a great park. I drove past it on my way to Calif- or, uh, Colorado numerous times. So, I've, uh, it's, it's nice. I want to go there. But... Jennifer, anything else about uh They also had um, Pelican Snowballs inside the ballpark. Yep, and two locations in the ballpark. Mm-hmm. I mean, not all, however many, hundred, hundred flavors. There was probably but... 20 flavors. And yeah. a very folksy Enough. local musician. 
Did a good job. I mean, even even the uh, merchandise wasn't all that expensive. No, it wasn't. Mm-hmm. And normal... they don't really have a store. They had a couple tables out there. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like when you go to like a hockey game or something, and they have the stuff on the concourse, just a little setup like that. And this is it's just. A... And there was just one like when I messaged them this morning, I was just like, "Hey, I've got one recommendation." You know, when I go to minor league ballparks, I like to collect little hat pins to put on my hat, just as like a souvenir of, "Hey, I've been here" or something. And I was just like, hey, one recommendation, you know, I collect this stuff. I would love to see if you guys carried them. And, like, immediately they're like, we would definitely take that into consideration. Thank you for the suggestion. Like, they didn't have to say that. They didn't have to reply. But just that they actually care what the fans think is pretty awesome. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So they said they would, um, they done that in Lexington, you know. And there was a uh, there was a fireworks show afterwards? And that's, that's what made it great, too. Because, like I said, the game got over quick, so it was still daylight. So the staff went on the field and played Cutest the Cutest moment shot. you're ever going to see in your life, too. Yeah. It would bingo and the little kid, you know, and then the little kids dancing. But, I mean, they they kept you entertained. You knew what was going on, and you didn't mind them doing the cha-cha. You knew they were stalling Long until it got dark enough for the fireworks show, but you didn't care because it was fun stalling. It was, what, 20-minute delay just to get dark? But, I mean, they were just... Out there dancing, the two on-field people time. just out there dancing, having a fun time, getting the fans behind it. Just you know what, Cottonmouth Joe, the Cha Cha, what it, I mean, and like they were getting into it. It's just not some just something to get through the day or get through the night. Like they were hardcore into it and everything. And also, it, something I said last night: the fireworks show was the icing, not the cake. I can't tell you how many times I've been to a game in Hickory or somewhere else where there's some kind of gimmick that gets people there. And those people don't give a crap about baseball. Everybody here Can't really wanted to. See, everybody here really wanted to see a fireworks show, but also really was into the game, and that's what I love. Start to finish, like, first pitch until you leave the park. Enjoy the experience. There is there was. I don't think there was one non baseball fan there that I saw. I mean, everybody was invested. They were into it. You know, it was it was a lot of fun. It was great. Yeah, it was a great experience. So atmosphere wise, definitely up on the top. Yep. Yeah. We've spent almost 20 minutes now talking about Burlington. Talking about Burlington. <laughs> bragging about it. Well, that's because we want this in Hickory. And I hope, and I mean, Mark, I, lo- I love you to death. You, you do great things, you know, but your staff, they're dropping <laughs> the ball, man. They need and a little coaching or something. And I'll tell you this face to face. I mean, I don't know if you watch this or listen to it, but, you know, I, I want to sit down and talk to you about this because, like, you know, I told you the other night, I want to work for this team. I want I want to be a part of the of the Hickory Crawdads. I mean that's I guess that's my calling, you know. But I you know I want to sit down in my seat and I want to do what I do, what I you know without being well you can't do this because you work for the team, and you know. But I want to make this the fan experience. I want people coming back. I mean, if I got to sit down with you and do it, I will. I mean, because... we can, you know we have people that come from Asheville. I think it's every Tuesday that we're home and they're not home. They come here to sit beside 108 because we give the show as well, you know, besides what's going on on the field, you know. All this talk about staff, I'm going to go to the walk into the game on Wednesday, and, and like the, I'm gonna, I'll, whoever the first person I see is, probably Chris, is going to be up like, hey, I heard you was talking shit. He's not listening. But, you know, we, we had a guy the last homestand who looked like Chad Kroger. If you don't know who he is, it's the lead singer Nickelback. You know, and I wanted them to play Nickelback for a walk-up song because it was, it would have been funny. I we tried wanted every them time. to play Photograph because his photograph up there on the board looked just like him. And I said it every time I walked up, I would say, "Look at this photograph." Right. And a, every, a lot of people would laugh, and then Tim would usually go, "Every time I does it, make me it makes me laugh." Every, <laughs> people got what we were doing. Right. And you know, they I was working that night, and they Jennifer and Alan they asked me like, "Hey, will you go ask them if they'll play this song?" And you know, I go and ask play this if they would play the song, and it's like a bomb goes off. We got one this year. We yeah, got, and now they play it just to make y'all mad. Yeah, got to make this one shady. But you know, we tweeted them that night, and it had I think like fourteen retweets. They didn't care, and that's what makes me mad because I don't want to get mad at my own team, but something has to give. You know, we have to have people that care about those kids on that field or those young men on that field because that's what makes it great. Yes. Everybody, we should not have, like, I've been, this is my 11th season there. We should not have staff members who talk so down on the team 
want us to lose, want us to suck, talk, you know, talk down on our players, you know, everything. That, it, it bugs me to my wits end. We need to start a GoFundMe page to get just like a bus and take the whole Crawdad staff, front office, on field, everybody, mm -hmm. to a game in Burlington. I agree. I mean, just, I want them, it's basically... Because y'all are already doing a good job. We're not mad at you. Just, it could be so much better. It could be like oh, no. it used to be. It could the be like... The championship year. Yes. The championship year. It could be like when we went, when me and my dad used to go to games in the mid-2000s when they were with the Pirates, and we sucked ass, but we had a fun time every night. Mm -hmm. Like, last night was uh, Burlington's third win. They're, they're three and fifteen. Yeah, well, then, then they won today too, by the way. Woo! Oh, so now they're suck it, ready. Four and ten. I think they're four and zero oh against the Reds. I think that's the only team they beat all year. <laughs> but you know, we're good with that. But those guys, when they walked off that field, they were ecstatic. I mean, I would be too. But that goes to show you they suck, you know, and they're losing. But the fans still showed up. And cheered them on and had a good time. Mm -hmm. If we suck and we go on a, 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 just a drought of losing, nobody comes. nobody comes to my stadium, our stadium, their stadium, <laughs> whatever. And it sucks. I mean, because you ha you can't chant with nobody there. So, sorry. <laughs> we didn't mean for this to turn into a rant. We just really like Burlington. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we gotta speak our mind somehow. I mean, we deserve to. Yeah. Who else is going to listen to us? I mean, like if we walked into our stadium and put down these, laid down these issues, who's going to listen to us? Not so much you because of the veteran discount, but like as by like me and the people that aren't season ticket holders that sit in 108 and stuff like that that are that are regulars, non-season ticket, non-season ticket regulars. Uh, they spend so much money on tickets and parking and food and stuff. They are invested. And one of those guys hosts a podcast and he's saying Step y'all's game up. You guys are a B right now. Burlington's an A+. Plus. Go get that A+. Plus. Boom. Bitches. More fan interaction, more theme nights. We need stuff to get people out there. And then that's all there is to it. Yeah. Well, theme nights are coming up. I, I'm, I'm excited for this week. I'm not getting into the promotion, but, <clears throat> you know, I think it's going to be fun. Well, I mean, yeah, we have some, I mean, we have decent nights, but we could... Like if you if they would just look on at other teams around minor league baseball and what gets people there, if they would just follow and go in that direction, it's just it's amazing. Bobbleheads. Bobbleheads. Theme jerseys. Theme jerseys and sound effects. Something I was talking about. Sound effects, yes, because we had it back in the championship year. We had stuff. Oh, that's not even the whole thing. But go ahead and finish what you're saying. I mean, just just that one where the I think it's the Incredibles. That was totally wicked. I loved it. I loved when they played that every time mm -hmm. something cool was happening. Anyway, me and Jimmy, when, our, when our score who is a, he's our current scorekeeper now. When he you're was, the one that invited him. When he was on music, he was he everything was awesome. Well, I'm glad you said that, Lee, because that's actually bridging into what I was talking about. Oh, the other night, me and Jeremy were talking about <laughs> things about the crawl ads that we like that they don't do anymore. And the first thing I said was the pinstripe jersey. Uh, that's that was the main jersey when I was a little kid. And, you know, I've, I've been going to Crawdads games since I was a baby, so 20 years. And, uh, anyway, in that time, very short towards the end of the stint with the White Sox, but most of my childhood was the Pirates. And uh, those were not good teams. But it was still packed most nights all the time because it was still a hell of a lot of fun. The on-field people were really good and excited about their stuff. There was fireworks every single Friday night. There still is most Fridays, but not all Fridays still. But uh, there was a, there were theme jerseys every now and then. But uh, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't hurt my feelings if we did fireworks more. Yeah, I want fireworks more. That's what I was saying. Uh -huh. But the one thing that me and my dad loved every time it would it would it would make us laugh. It was like the it was like the preliminary version of what 108 would come to be eventually. Is uh, before you, before Chris, before anybody was there when it was when that when section 108 was nothing more than just a section and had no other meaning. Their old sound effects guy would play some funny thing after almost everything. Every, opposing mm -hmm. opposing player hits a home run or does a cool play. Shania Twain, that don't impress me much. Or here's a quarter, call someone who cares. Uh, foul ball, they go, uh, where's the kaboom? Like the, it was uh, supposed to 
be a nice shattering kaboom. Marvin the Martian. Mm-hmm. Uh, the mine thing. They still do that sometimes for the foul ball from uh, Finding Nemo. Mine, mine, mine. That that was one. Uh, they would switch up the opposing team's walk-up music and they'd put something funny with them. If they had the same last name as a singer, they'd play one of their songs. If their picture looked funny, they'd play a song that was about like the Nickelback thing. But just they had sound effects for almost everything. And we also used to, it was uh, Greensboro, had Justin Twine. You know, they would put they a would picture, put picture of, of yep. Twine. A roll of like twine. Like a roll of twine. Yeah. It's his picture. Just, and then, what, you know, that was like last, was that last season? Last no, season, season before? Season before that. You know, and then, you know, Crystal, who was our photographer, she would superimpose her faces on this, that, and the other, and it would just... It was nice. Another one that used to get me and my dad rolling was, you know, on Family Guy when Peter fell down and scraped his knee and yeah. he sits there going, oh, ah, they somebody do, got, they still do that they occasionally, do that but not. Somebody got hit by a pitch or something, they do it every time. We have this ginormous scoreboard that's awesome. We need to use it. Spend all it, that right? money on that. Get your money's worth. I mean, a speed pitch that works half the time. Well, that's only if you flip the switch, right? It's something that deals with this track man thing that I don't know much about, but it's worked maybe half our games. Maybe. It worked for the first month of the season. And, you know, like you were saying, the person that did all these sound effects is now our official scorekeeper. I wish we could talk him going back into music. Heck, let me scorekeep. Let him do music again. Because our fan interaction will probably be a lot better. I mean, imagine all that stuff I talked about with the added benefit of Chris and you and all of us and Tim and Monica and to everybody down there in 108. It'd be the best. It'd be the best ballpark in the minor league. Everybody would say, "Did you hear about what Hickory did last week?" And then they'd show up. Like 108 now, is the super fan section. The PA, like the PA people, the press box. They need to get you guys involved. Some speaking of I'll, people. I'll, oh, never mind. No, no, sorry. go ahead, go ahead. I was gonna bring up a a thing, but you want to. But it's I'm a just saying, subject. but West Virginia, I mean, I, the Toastman has been doing it for years and years. I, I'm going to look it up and find out how long he's been doing it. But they had a Toastman night because he was doing it for so long. They gave him his own seat with a thing to plug his toaster into. Well, you know, and they recognize him. I don't want recognition. But, but you guys the, deserve it. But at the same time, we have people that said, like I said, come to the games to see us and cheer and watch what we do. They put stuff on the scoreboard that helps like out. I said, Jennifer, Jennifer hated baseball. Hated it. Didn't understand it. She still don't know, you know, she gets a hell of a lot more than what she did, but she hated sitting there because it was boring. We don't make it boring. And that's what I tell people, you know, like, oh, man, I don't want to come to a baseball and sweat my butt off. It's hot, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, because you're sitting there thinking about it. You know, come out there and have fun. Do the cheers, you know. Then you don't think about how hot it is and everything. It's just, I want, I want so much more for our team, and I and I feel like we can do it if we could just find the right people yeah. to. Like I feel like it. at the end of this season, we need to take, we we need to just like literally take a fan suggestion box yes. and let fans suggest what they want, what they want to see, you know, stuff like that, and literally take the time to go through every single thing and, you know. The popular ones do them. A, I mean, uh, it's minor league baseball. Scoreboard stuff that helps Chris put stuff on the scoreboard that accompanied what Toastman was saying. They did that for Chris. That'd be awesome. Another thing, a radio announcer. Well, that's that really you know. They, no. they're, they're, it's going to happen. I, I don't want to say I promise. I hope it's me. Well, it might be, but it's going to happen eventually. I mean, I mean heck, with the Rangers can... being here. I think it will happen within the next two years. It might not happen next year, but maybe the next. Well, just pay I, me what you pay me now, and I'll do it. I don't care. I hate to bust up the Burlington Love slash Come to Jesus meeting that we're having with the Crawdad staff here, <laughs> but Is I saw. Time to move on? But speaking of talking about minor league baseball and minor league baseball being mainstream, yesterday we all saw something on Sports Center. That made us excited and glad and happy, awesome. and it was awesome. It was well, we saw it on Facebook before that, you know, but we were just... Well, we saw of, the plays, but we yeah. had no idea it was going to be on Sports Center. We didn't have no idea, but we were, uh, in we the, were hoping. at the mall, and we were in a, a sporting goods store. They had Sports Center on. I happened to glance up at the TV. I'm like, hey, it let's, was, let's, it was let's the, wait a second. It was the seventh... Uh, oh, 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 by the way, it's coming home. Shout out to our British listeners. 
<laughs> there might be one. Anyway, back to the story. I saw it, it, they were playing the number seven play on Sports Center already. We what? interrupt this baseball soccer. podcast I don't know for a soccer fact. Oh. Now back to your regular okay. schedule. Just look up hashtag. I was like, hey, let's hold on just a second. Let's let's see if the Wood Ducks great plays happen to make Sports Center. So we stand there and lo and behold. They got the three. We got and the three two. and two, and we're like, no, no, there's no way. There's no, there's no, there's no, there's no it had way. To be number eight, right? And yeah. then all of a sudden, here comes number one, and it's just like, I already knew what it was when I saw it because I just I watched. You it see so the much. blurry camera feed, and you knew it. it. I mean, I just it was the ESPN. It, it, was West, it was Winston Salem's Park. I knew what it looked like. It wasn't their park, was it? Yeah, yeah it, was. it was. The the ESPN anchors kept making fun of how blurry the camera was and this and that. But explain the play. The play: someone hit a, a foul ball on the third base side and. The left fielder was Kowalczyk. Yeah, Alex Kowalczyk he was running in. It. He slid, tipped it up in the air. To Tejeda. An- Anderson Tejeda caught it, so there was out one number one. And then and threw he a rope. it to first base to get Blake Rollerforton on his retreat back to first and got tagged out. And got so the double, double play. play. Awesome. I mean, it was a fantastic up. play. Franklin Rowland made a super diving catch. In, in right. right field. And then Emerson had a between the legs. Uh, there it wasn't, wasn't Emerson. Emerson. No, it wasn't Edgar. Emerson. It was Edgar. Ed, Ed, Edgar, Edgar, Edgar. super behind the leg, grab, you know, straight back at him, tossed over to first for the out. But, wow. You know, the Ducks, that's the second time that we've, they've, and we've what, been on Sports weeks? Center. That they've been on like Sports Center. Well, you know. The Ducks are killing it. They are the saving grace of this whole organization. You got that right. Granted, they're getting their butts kicked by uh, Winston Salem. What? Lee keeps interrupting everything he says, so I'm going to hand you the quiet please son. And when he does that, I want you to hold that up and he knows to shut his mouth. I wasn't interrupting anybody. He is worse than you. Everything you say, he cuts in to say it before you say it. Honey. No, not you. (laughs) For what? You're doing good. I think we've decided that's why you like it when Lee's around. Because when Lee's around, the focus is on him. And not you. Oh, yes. And not you. I'm... I'm usually Meg, and now you're Meg. I don't know what that means. It's another Family Guy reference. I don't know Family Guy. It, I'm usually the black sheep. I'm usually the one that gets shit on. I'm usually the... Well, you're white when Lee's around. White. And he's black. I get to be the white sheep. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Again, video version only this week. If you're still listening to the audio, go to the video. If that's it, our co-host Alan will upload load, any of them. Last week's episode will be loaded, and yeah. this one tonight, I promise. I've just been slack because I got to thinking. Hell, I tell you guys, the promotions <laughs> for the upcoming weekend, if you listen and you don't hear it, you don't know. So that's my bad. I just, I, I've been tired since, seriously, I have been drained since we came back from Texas. I had an off day today. I got tomorrow off. I got Tuesday off. So I'm back. I'm still going to be tired. I've been broke since we got back in But Texas. everything's going to be back on track. I promise. Yeah, speaking of Texas, uh, Chris saw Red Alert. Better. Uh, <laughs> uh, red Alert up, Nick. Uh, you know, he said that she was nice to him and she said that she was going to look me up and look the show up. But I think she was just saying that to be nice and not you know, be rude to Chris, and as soon as Chris walked away, she had to be like, these weirdos. She is never coming to North Carolina. She is never getting another job in the Rangers organization. She has been, she's probably scared to death now in North Carolina. Red alert, I I apologize if you're somehow watching this. Uh, I didn't... She is not watching. You're right. Or listening. But but it was, it's just awesome that Chris made it happen. Yes, and I think she was just trying not to be rude to Chris. She's not actually going to look me up, but it was nice that but she, she said that to him. she still hasn't seen your message, right? Yes, But correct. the fact is, she knows about Ethan. She knows I exist. Did he actually? Did Chris actually use my name and tell yeah. her this guy, Ethan Benfield, thinks this and this? Because I still haven't heard from Chris exactly what he said. They should be back this week so we can actually talk to them again. Are they not already back? No, they're in Mississippi. Yeah, they're- Alan, I'm sorry. I would use names 
to address who I'm speaking to for the remainder uh, of this podcast. They're around Mississippi somewhere. I well, I'll ask them on Thursday. Because I don't think I'm going to be there Wednesday, but I will be there Thursday. Why will you not be there Wednesday? You have to be there Wednesday. Wednesday's going to be awesome. When? What's, what's, or Thursday, I'm sorry. Thursday, definitely awesome. So do you want to get into that? You want to mm-hmm. talk about stuff? or If you want to. We? Is well, that okay with you? Is that okay with, with you? Y'all go ahead. Grand Y'all Shaba of the right podcast. Ahead. You guys do what you want to talk about. Well, right now, they're still in Del Marva. So m- tomorrow, the game is at 7.05. And guess what night it is. Is this the night that me and Ethan are going to be excited yes. about? On Monday? Yeah. This Monday in Del Marva? Uh, yeah, tomorrow. Tomorrow's Monday. Yeah. We do podcasts on Sunday. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's one of y'all's special um, promotions. Is he saying that ironically like it's something I hate? No. Well, he said it's both of us, so. Want well, something both me it's, and you really like? It's on like. Monday. I mean, we went over this one before, and y'all really like it. Okay. 47, <laughs> ABC, two <laughs> vote Monday. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. 47. 47. ABC. ABC. Two buck. Two buck. Monday. Monday. Okay. Which right. means enjoy two dollar upper reserve tickets, two dollar hot dogs, and two dollar fountain Pepsi products. If I could just run that by you one more time, that is two do- two buck. No, that's that's uh. No, no, no. What is it? It's, it's channel forty seven. Forty seven. A B C. A B C. Two buck. Two dollar. Monday. Monday. Okay. All right, we are now clear on that. A B S A G L M N O P three dollar th- Fridays, right? Yep. Yep. Thank you. Thank All right. T G T G I O Charlie's got it. Okay. Next promotion. All right. Tuesday they're off. They're off. They're on the road back. So Wednesday we're back home. Games at seven o'clock. It's the world record Wednesday. Come out to the ballpark and watch Conrad, the staff. And and maybe some fans try to break some world records. Did you guys know that? Wait, do you I have was, any details about this world record? Thing? I know absolutely nothing. I was part of a world record. So I'm in the book Jennifer. and everything. Oh, what were y'all in? We in the book. What were y'all in? We were in uh, Columbia. Columbia Fireflies. And when the that? eclipse Three. was, and that was the highest. All right. I am in a very yeah. ironic one, given my opinion on this very phenomenon. But phenomenon. I was. I was part of phenomenon. <laughs> That's not what that is. That's a different. It's. That's not how you say that. I know what you're doing, but that's a different. It's close, enough. Yeah, it's close enough. I was part of the world's largest. Everybody, do it with me. Feet competition. Wave. Oh. World's largest wave. Bristol Motor Speedway, 2013. Did you participate or did you? Yes, participate? I did. Yes, I did. Is it okay during races? Wait, were you going to distract the drivers? That's right something that you don't want to distract. No, you're not going to distract the drivers. They're in there. It's loud. They're not going to be distracted by that. And plus, it was during a caution. Yeah, world's largest wave. 160,000 people? Yeah, 152. This was towards the end of the popularity. I mean, it was still it was still all the way up, but it was like on the way out of being all the way up. Now it's crap. All the way up. All the way up! But yeah, I hate the wave. Next promotion. Thursday, 7 o'clock. The one that I've actually been waiting for all, all season long. Does anybody want to take a guess? I know what it is, so I'm not going to guess. Limp Biscuit Night. Where's You're killing from? me, Small. All the players got to wear the hats backwards. Where's from? Sam where's, from? Where's, from? where's Fred Durst from? Gastonia. Oh. Not Greensboro. They both start with a G and they're in North Carolina. You think he'd be from some gimmicky movie. place like Parts Unknown or Death Valley? <laughs> but Thursday, the game's at 7 and it's the 25th anniversary of one of the greatest baseball movies ever. That's eh, alright. The Sandlot. So, you come dressed as one of the characters, you get a free ticket. There you go, Ethan. Who are you going to come dressed as? Wendy Peppercorn! <laughs> <laughs> Wear the little red bikini. Right. What if... Make sure you get the glasses. What together. if I had a girlfriend by this time next week? <laughs> um, I mean, you do got to look like squints. Yeah, that's where I'll be squints and my new girlfriend will be Wendy Peppercorn. Now, that I, that's a pretty quick turnaround. Who have you got in your sights? I don't really know nobody right now, so uh, it, it, 
Somebody, I need my Wendy. Somebody, come see me by Thursday. He thinks some of you foreign soccer ladies are going to become easier once you get your... No, 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 I didn't say that. I didn't say that. I said if England wins the World Cup, Alicia will be happy, and that is cool because... She might be a little more open. Except the legs. No, no, (laughs) no, no. She is a lovely, classy lady. She is not like that. Calm down. I'm calm. You're the one that calm. It's coming home. Not my home, but a home. Next promotion. Coming. <laughs> Yesterday. We're not going to talk about it. What? You been guzzling that sun kiss? Perfect, Jennifer. I, I hate y'all. <laughs> Friday, 7 o'clock. Hi, Edwards. Friday, the 13th. <laughs> Woo! Woo! <laughs> it's the movie <laughs> Halloween's. 40th anniversary. So. What? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Dress up as anybody that, you know, from a character from the Halloween movie, get in free. Oh, from God, the Halloween extra. movie? Yeah. That's all your options? It says dress up you can't any dress co- up Okay, I'm sorry. Any, any costume. costume. And <laughs> anything you would like and receive a free ticket. Ooh, I'm going to be Bray Wyatt. What about a clown? You're going to be what? That doesn't matter. Can we dress up as it and come in? Are you working? I'll give everybody five dollars if they come dressed up as a clown. Just come down to 108 in row one. If you're dressed like a clown, I'll give you five dollars. Jesus help me. And they got five. Unless you're a regular ticket holder in 108, y'all ain't pulling this. Oh, don't forget t-shirt giveaway. Yes. yes. Don't tell them that. The 1,000 fans. Then go get the t-shirt. Get a free t-shirt. He was gonna forget it. I wasn't gonna get one because I'm gonna be working. They, they only gonna have like mediums. Yeah, sh- medium. Sh- medium. So. Hey, the extra large fit me somehow. The last one. So. Saturday, the guys will be traveling to Charleston. The game is at six oh five. I was like, what is crawling under my leg? It's pussy. <laughs> it's been a while. Probably never. You know, it's not a big hairy. Touch it. You can touch it. Yeah. Right down there. Right yeah. before your legs. Saturday, the guys said the guys will be in Charleston taking up. on the River Dogs. The game is at 6.05. The promotion for that game is after the game, there will be 1,000 t shirts thrown in the seats. That sounds unsafe. I like the odds. I like the But at odds. the same time, it sucks because what if you're really lucky and get one or two shirts? Or two or three shirts. You nice. give two of them to somebody. But you know those guys ain't gonna do it. It's Charleston. You put them hoes on eBay. I like when they do the helicopter ball drop to win money. I've never been a part of one of those. It looks fun. That's actually really cool. And I'm gonna go ahead and say Sunday promotion. Sunday, Sunday. It is at going to. 5.05 because I think we're actually going to this game. In uh, Charleston. See. So, wait. It, it should be really this, fun. Next Sunday? Yeah. This, this Sunday. A week from today. Yeah, Am I on that trip? If you get in the car, you're on that trip. Okay, cool. Yeah. I think. Because mm-hmm. Jennifer just made a face. She did. I didn't make a face. Okay. Well, <gasps> you can't see my face because I put this. They're being kind enough to wait till I get off work to leave, well, which is shit. fantastic. We'll That's what you say. If you're in Hickory. But right. the promotion for, the day, for that day is what me and Jennifer and Cooper done today. It's Dino Day. We just drove around playing. Motherfucker! Oh! oh. <laughs> Stop it. Calm I am down, so Preston. sorry. Calm down, Preston. So it's not sorry, that guys. serious. But what happened was, you know, at the end and of the show, back. how they do the Take It Away Jennifer Day. See, what I had wrote down was Jurassic World. And what Alan is getting ready to tell you guys about is dinosaurs so he's gonna take away what i was going to take away the show with and it upset me and then she turned my camera off i didn't turn his camera off i threw my tablet as you saw before the video in ended. a fit of rage yeah. jennifer just turned heel fit of rage jennifer just turned heel all right where's sasha i don't know she what need, that means you need to you need to you turn into a villain it's hot in you're here. a dastardly diddler you. why is it hot in here take paint over to that thing right there <laughs> That's why it's hot in here. See that glass right there? This is That's why it's Red hot. Red Bull and pineapple vodka. Christ. It's hot in here. I mean, I want to try a sip of it. Oh, Jesus. 
Your mother's not gonna like that. She's not gonna let you come. I, over she, she does not. You watch just this. said, but you said the most. She doesn't watch the show. You said the most responsible thing that I've ever heard you said, which is Jesus. That is strong. I was wondering why she was smelling it. Ah! Don't try that. For the first time, it didn't taste like that. That's it. actually really good. Mm -hmm. No, I like alcohol. That's good. That is just some. Dude, bad. that is good. Uh, the what? First time uh, it didn't taste like it had enough vodka in it, so I had poor little. Whatever. Those are the. the he's, are there any more promotions? The first it's just Dino Day. Mm -hmm. Enjoy a, a dinosaur much. day at the park. 505. Charleston Sunday. So no, I'm not just, sure we're almost done. What we're doing <laughs> podcast done on Sunday. We might just record Monday. So that's all I have. You can record on the way home. Lee! <laughs> we're gonna give you the very last sentence of the show. Make uh -huh. it yeah, we are. I got something else I can take it away with. Jennifer Day, please take it away. Uh, we went to the mall today, and there's a sweet little kitty outside of J.C. Penney's downstairs. And I think he's homeless. He doesn't have a home. And I told him I loved him, and I asked him to come to me, but he ran away. Well, that's sweet. Wee! Last sentence of the show. Make it special. Lucky dog don't do their job. Whoa. If people wouldn't come terrorize me... And that's the show. There's a Dirty Balls Podcast, episode 20. We hope you enjoyed it. Can't believe we made it this far. Can't believe that the three of you are still watching. See you later. We're in on Fridays.